there, welcome to this seventh episode of the I Ching 101 series, where we look at unpacking our knowledge and expertise and understanding the I Ching and working with it as a practical tool to improve our lives, to accelerate our development and get towards our meaningful purpose we are here to realize. So in our last episode, we spoke about how to cast the I Ching coins. Well, one of the key questions coming out of that process is what is a changing line? So you would have noticed from that when we cast the coins, whether we got a six or an eight, we were female lines, yin lines. Whether we cast a seven or a nine, that was a male line, an active yang line. And so our changing lines are wherever we have a nine, okay, so a moving or changing male line, or a six, a moving, changing female line. And so what is a changing line? You would have heard me talk about changing lines every time we do the weeklies and the monthly episodes. And they are what I call little intense pops of change. <laughs> and what this means is that within the context of the I Ching, we have our main hexagram. And if we have a six or a nine or multiples thereof, we have a second hexagram because some of the lines, some of the layers of change within our situation, within our question, have very intense little pops of energy that want to flip into their opposite. So when you get a nine, male changing line, or a six, a female changing line, when we create the outcome hexagram, we flip them into their opposite. Male becomes female, female becomes male. And you would know that from the previous episode where we looked at how to cast the coins. So what the changing line is saying is right here, here is something specific, the pop of change that we need to pay attention to because it's flipping into its opposite. It is transforming the main hexagram, the main core of the question and bringing us another layer of change, a second hexagram, which we sometimes call the relating or the outcome hexagram. So the changing lines, if you look at any I Ching book, you will see that there are six potential changing lines and each changing line has a specific piece of information tied to it. I love changing lines because they are very specific and they bring you very tangible, clear things to pay attention to over and above the main flows of change that our hexagrams give to us. Now, when we have lots of changing lines, it can be very difficult to work out what does this mean? Because if we haven't asked a time-based question, we can't time the lines out and see them as a sequence. They always work in a sequence from the bottom to the top, usually in a flow of change from the bottom to the top. And so we can use our changing lines to give us little breaks in flows of change or little steps of change throughout a time period if we've asked a time-based question. And if we haven't asked a time-based question, it gets tricky because sometimes the changing lines contradict each other. And then when we're working in interpretation, that's where the real magic comes of how do we bring this all together and how do we create the story of the I Ching, the learning and the insight and the message our subconscious mind is trying to get through to us desperately. So when we work with changing lines, what they bring us is they bring us a very specific piece of change, specific flows of change that draw our attention to specific things. And for hexagrams, they tend to have a structure or a story that they're telling as they go through. There's a lot of layers and depths to the changing lines. And there's lots of different schools of thought of how important changing lines are. It's up to you. If you find evidence in them, then work with them. And I do. I love them. I don't like getting a locked hexagram because it's just one thing to focus on. I like getting the changing lines because they do give us something to get our teeth into, some extra layers to work with and unpack. They certainly are not everything we should pay attention to, but I find them very useful and maybe you will as well. I also find when we work with interpretation that what kinds of changing lines, male and female lines, also give us a clue. So if we have lots of female yin lines that are wanting to change into male lines, I often see that the overriding message of these pops of change is that action is required. 
because the male yang energy is outward, it's moving, it's active, and it has a lot of energy. When we have a lot of male lines that are turning into female lines, the energy in a way is calling us to withdraw back into the female, become more passive, receptive, open, still. And so you might find that when you're working with your changing lines, when you see this pattern of maybe there's two changing lines and they're both female to male, the underlying theme that's coming out for your question is take action. If you have lots of male lines that are going female, maybe it's time to pull back. It's something that we are having to learn how to withdraw, get more passive, reactive and open to rather than trying to force the change or force a way forward. So those are changing lines. I love them and hope that you enjoy working with them. Get your books out, work with them across a variety of different texts. Maybe you have a couple of books that you love, work with them and start learning about them across the different types of resources and you'll start to build a relationship with them. Thank you so much for joining me for this I Ching 101 session on what is a changing line. Please remember to subscribe if you'd like to get future learning episodes in this playlist or if you'd like to get the weekly and monthly overviews focused on what the I Ching is asking us to pay attention to. And I look forward to connecting with you at a future episode.